the same thing. When your speed to time, when, your, when the ground of speed to time is drawn this way, it means that the particular body is at constant speed. But if the body is drawn this way, it means that the particular body is at what? An increasing speed. Are we getting it? Now, let's look at another thing. How do we calculate distances? Shall you understand? From your graph. How do you calculate distances from your graph? If you have a graph like this, or a graph of this nature, now the body goes this way, stops here, and proceeds here. Do you understand? Now this is uh, this is uh, a speed time graph. If you have a speed time graph, speed is in meter per second, and this time is what in seconds. Now the body is. At this juncture, I told you when it's increasing, it means that the speed is increasing. But at this junction, the speed is what? Constant. Now, if you are being told, okay, the body now eventually stops here, calculate, calculate the total distance covered. What do you do? That's a very big question. What do you do? As a physicist or as a scientist, you should be able to know that, okay, if you are being given a graph of this nature, for me to calculate distance from conveniently, I just need to, uh, to calculate the total area of the shape covered. Look at this is a shape covered. Are we getting this? You can do this shape, you can break this shape down in two ways. You can break this down. You know, this gives you triangle. And you can also break this down. This gives you either a square or a rectangle. Sure, you understand? So if you calculate the area, area of your triangle plus area of your what? Area of the square will give you total distance covered. I'm going to do a particular example to give you total distance covered. But if you have to do it together, this is one method. Method two, that particular shape is what we call what? Your triangle. Trapezium. Are we getting it? If you know what we call trapezium, trapezium is like this. Are we getting it? So, area of the trapezium now. Uh, you need to calculate the area of the trapezium. If I will recall very well, it is half A plus B times H. Where your A is this particular length, your B is this particular length, and your height is here. Have you seen it? So by the time you substitute all those values, you'll be able to get the particular area of this station. Or you break it down. The area of the triangle and the area of the square. Then you add it there together to get your total distance cover. Let's look at an example. Side there. Hope oh, this is clear. Let's go to let's look at an example side there. Then. Now we are told we said look at that shape. It's a graph of speed against time, right? Now, for speed against time, the body is at constant speed, right? Now, it now stopped here. It stopped here. Now, the time which it covered, this is 0, 20, 40, and 60. Are we seeing it? Total time covered is 60 seconds. The distance covered, I mean, the speed is 1, 2, 3, 4, why? Total speed covered is what? 5 meter per second. Are we saying it? Now, if you must actually calculate the total distance covered, now this is 5 against 60. Are we saying it? That's 5 against 60. So remember, we said speed. What is speed? Speed is what? Distance per time. Are we saying it? Now, if this is where you want to use the formula. This is method 1. Method 1, you are using formula. Speed equals distance per time. Now, what is speed here? 5. So, you just say 5 meters per second equals all the distance. That's what we are looking for, right? Now, for the time, the time covered is what? 60 seconds. So, by the time you want to cross multiply, your distance will come here. Then your 5 meters per second. Mind you, this per second is like over seconds. Now, we now be time 60. Seconds. So seconds will cancel seconds. So 5 times 6 will give you what? 300 meters. Are we seeing it? So it means that the total distance covered is 300 meters. But if you want to do it in terms of what? 
uh, in terms of method two now. Method two, in terms of formula or area of a shape. Now, this shape is what? Square. This place is 5 and this place is 60. This is 5 uh, meter per second and this is 60 seconds. So, area of a what? Rectangle is length times breadth. Why is it a rectangle? Because the two parameters are not equal. I didn't mean they are equal and you use what? You use square. So, area of a rectangle is length times breadth. So, that would be 5 times 60 and that gives you 300 meters. Of course, the as I need to pull out what cancel out from where you have 300 meters. So you definitely can calculate your total distance from, from any speed time graph. One, you either use the work formula or two, you use the shape form. Are we getting it? So that set tools that we transfer to total distance cover. Now let's go to another one. Velocity. Velocity. I know we spoke about we talked about speed, 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 speed. Now, what is velocity? What is velocity, speed, and velocity? That's our main purpose of what? This course. We're looking at velocity. Now, from our slide, what does velocity? Velocity says that it's the speed measured in a given direction. Do you understand? It is the speed measured in a given direction. For speed, speed is the distance. Ah, uh, sorry. Speed is what? It says speed is distance per time. While velocity is the speed you measure in a given direction. So it means that um, the velocity it can also be given to say, I mean, it can also uh, be displacement. Share understand? Velocity is displacement per time. Why speed? That is two major difference. Speed is distance per time. Okay, can see now. We are told to define velocity mathematically. It's just displacement per time. Why your speed is distance per time. Now, another thing about velocity it is the rate of change of displacement with time, which I've just written. The rate of change of velocity, I mean, of displacement with time. Now, uh, from the graph there, we have what we call velocity time graph. It's almost the same as what the graph we've been drawing initially. So. That explains that. So from here now, we can say uh, velocity. Okay, I've written that velocity is displacement per what? Per unit time. Displacement per unit time. Now, for you to now calculate displacement now, for you to calculate displacement, displacement will now be what? Displacement will be velocity times what? Times time. So I will ask you. What is the SI in then? This is in is meter now. Time is in seconds. So velocity 2 is in what? Meter per second. That's what? Speed. Speed 2 is in meter per second. They have the same SI unit for different definition. Are we saying it now? So that explains that when it comes to uh, velocity. Now, if you check your graph, if you check the diagram there, there is a particular calculation there, which I have said initially. Why to calculate delta displacement? Either displacement or distance, you must you can you, you can use what the shape of that particular object covered to what calculate it. Look at the diagram they have there now. We have something like this. This is ten. This is twenty. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. Are we seeing it? So this is time in seconds, and this is what? Velocity in meter per second. So if you are told to, to calculate the total displacement, what do you do? You find the area of what? This what? Triangle. And then the area of this what? Uh, the area of this what? Um, rectangle. Now for the triangle now, you have what? Half base times height. This is half times, what will be the base? The base is two. What will be the height? 20. So 2 year, 2 year. So you have your 20 meter per second. That's for the what? That's for the what? Uh, uh, for the triangle. Now, for the rectangle now. Rectangle is what? Rectangle is what? Length times breadth. Right? Now, my length is from here to here. 2 minus 6, 4. My breadth is here to here. That's 20. So when you calculate, you have your 80. 80m 
meter per second. So by the time you add, so you total total displacement. The total displacement will be what 20 plus 80, which will give you what 100 meter per second. Now the next thing here is the next um, topic we'll be looking at are the equations of motion. Equations of motion. You know we spoke about speed to speed time graph, velocity time graph, deflation of speed, deflation of velocity, and how to actually calculate total distance covered. Do you understand? What I just did here is the total displacement covered. Mind you, if you are dealing with, see there are some things you need to know. If you are dealing with speed, speed time graph, you will be told to calculate total distance covered. If you are also dealing with, but if you are dealing with velocity time graph, you'll be told to calculate total displacement. So you can see the two now. There are two different things though. Yes, distance covered is measured in meter. Displacement is also measured in meter. But you have to indicate the one you actually want. Uh, working on. So that your examiner or the person that is actually marking your skill will know that one. Yes, you know what you are doing. Hope you are getting it. If you are dealing with speed time graph, you are calculating total distance. If you are dealing with velocity time graph, you are calculating total displacement cover. So those two must be what properly uh, distinguished. Now let's go to equations of motion. These are also very very easy equations that you can always what, have in your in your left hand. You know there is nowhere you go to in physics where you don't make use of what the equations of motion. There is no particular topic you'll be dealing with. And you'll not be making use of equations of motion. Now, it goes to us, your S, which is speed, can be given as what? V. V plus U over 2. Right? Then times of T. Now, the second one.